Rami X back in a video. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button as it would be greatly appreciated. It would also be very, very, very much appreciated if you checked out the links affiliated down below to support the channel and just to support me overall. Please my, you know, I guess you could say happiness. With that being said, make sure to comment down below what the suggestions as it would be really appreciated if I could see some of you guys' suggestions so that I can do future what if topics and continue to do even more what ifs. With that being said, we shall now get into the recap. In the last part, we basically ended off with Naruto's will being further broken. We also had the whole dynamic with, well, Roshi kind of throwing Naruto off 1600 times of off of Mount Onoki. Um, this would cause, like, the Leaf Village to be suspicious and wonder where Naruto was. So, would, so they would actually send Ambu to the Leaf Village. But under Roshi's rule, these Ambu were not to be killed. Rather, they were just to be severely injured and, well, thrown off the mountain. This would deter them from any, like, I guess you could say push. Like, any, like, pushing towards the mount, as other people call it. But in actuality, it's Mount Oniki. With that being said, we now switch back to Naruto. Naruto would sit in the middle of a town filled with bandits as bandits laughed at him, mocked him, spat at him, threw things at him, and looked at him in disgust. Is this really the boy who we're being pilled a paid a billion to kill? We're not to kill him, Jim. Don't call me by my real name. Refer to me as Jim Taro. Fine, Jim Taro. We're not to kill him. Rather, we must break his will. Did you not hear, Roshi? If we are to kill him, we do not get a single dime. But if we break his will, we get a billion. To ourselves, and maybe even all of us. <laughs> he did say he'd keep his word. And if he doesn't give it to us, we'll just rob him for all his gold. Now, continue your job. Continue mocking this boy. I was also informed that his dream is to protect his village. Mock him about that. Oh, and his mother. Mock him about that as well. Her name's Uzumaki Kushina, or Kushina Uzumaki. Fine then, boss. Jimtaro, do not fail me. Fine, Master Senin. Master Senin, who was clearly the leader of all these bandits, I don't know if I made that apparent, but yeah, he's the leader of all these bandits, would walk away as he would watch from afar. Slowly throwing darts at Naruto to slowly, you know, break his defenses and things of the sort. With that being said, Jim Taro would approach Naruto, kicking him into a nearby building. Naruto would then laugh, smiling. You think you can break my will? Roshi put you up to this, didn't he? Roshi who? The only person who I'm here is. Or the only reason why, I should say, is... Well, because you're the son of Kushina Uzumaki. That brat. That brat. She's your mother, isn't she? At this point, Naruto had known that she's his mother. He had to. It, it Well, everything kind of just aligned. As he was angered. Don't speak bad about my mother, Naruto would say, looking down at the ground. Naruto's hair covering his face as he was sweaty. Sweaty from the constant harm done to his body. Things being splashed all over him, even in some cases hot boiling water. And most people watching this should know how hot boiling water is, or at least close to how hot it is. Maybe you touched a stove when you were younger, uh, maybe eight, maybe younger than that. Um, but with that being said, please do not touch a st stove. It, it hurts. You may get a blister on your finger. It, it, just, just don't. It makes no sense. Don't touch, like, boiling hot water, or you can, like, touch the outside of a kettle, maybe, but, like, don't stick your hand in, like, please, it, it hurts as well. Like, I don't want you guys to, like, injure yourselves, but I think you guys get the point um, of what is happening in Naruto. Anyway, also, sorry for any background noise, um, my family's just laughing a lot due to the fact that they're watching a funny movie, you could say. Um, with that being said, Naruto would not have it. He would stand up as he was ready to face this bandit. But immediately, 50,000 bandits charged Naruto. When he told the bandit to stand down, the bandit laughed at him. Naruto couldn't even get close to Jim Taro, the man who was laughing at him. Jim Taro then, then yelled out, Master Senin, 
come down here and show this brat a lesson. Just hit him on the, well, head with your hammer. It will really straighten him out. Do you want me to give him brain damage? You fool. Did you not hear Roshi's orders? Just do it. Trust me. Fine. Master Senin, as well the bandits refer to him, would pull back a giant hammer he held on his back, as he would then slam it into Naruto's head. This would send shockwaves through Naruto's body, as he would then fall to the ground. Who are you? I'm the man who killed your mother, Master Senin would smirk. Is this good, Jim Taro? Master Senin would whisper. Yes, quite perfect. Now... You will do as I say, or I will kill your mother just like I had killed you. You know, she actually once possessed the fox spirit. How do you know all that? Did you really do what you're saying? Naruto could no longer hold back. His rage spiraled out of control. And, well, nothing he could do would help him. The Ninetales couldn't even help him, even though it tried. Nor the Susano. Continuously, the bandits would put seals on Naruto. They were afraid of what could happen if they didn't. Constantly put seals over his body to negate anything, as they were told about his, well, Teke Genkai. Not only that, but his tailed beast, because it would be very dangerous and they would all die if, well, the Ninetales really got, you know, angry, so to speak. I don't think the nine tail or I don't think these bandits are beating even the six tails, Naruto. Um, I guess it really just depends though. With that being said, Naruto would continue to try to attack these well, ninja, as Senin, as I'll refer to him for now, would then look at Naruto smirking. You claim to be a powerful ninja when you came to Mount Onaki. As Roshi said, it's called, not just Mount, but in actuality, <clears throat> shall I clear my throat to say this, as it is very important. You are just scum beneath me, just like your mother and even your father. Naruto's eyes would turn pale white. He would then scratch the dirt beneath him. Slowly, he would dig into it. His nails now filled with dirt, and even dirty, so to speak. He would then lift the bandits off of him, as he would roar out. This roar was enough to send a shockwave around him, but it wasn't enough to defeat the bandits, not in the slightest. Each bandit would then make a comment about his mother and father. None true, but Naruto took it as such. But Naruto not even being able to stand up for his own parents let alone his village, as they did mock that as well. They mocked his friends, they mocked his family, they mocked his home. As Naruto was unable to do anything, Naruto's will would shatter. He would then go for a punch, but Master Senin, or just Senin for short, would then elbow him in his back, causing Naruto's punch to then fall to the ground. He would then stand on his legs, but his head was pointed downwards. Naruto's hair then covered his eyes, just like it had when he was, well, kicked on the floor. Naruto would then not speak. He would not cry. He would not roar. He was not mad. He was tired. He hadn't slept in days, nights, even a week. But he had kept fighting, continuously taking their insults and throwing some back at them. Naruto was very strong-willed, very, very strong-willed. Not to mention how powerful Naruto had continued to got, or get, I should say, as his durability slowly increased, and so did his power. This was like training, but on hard difficulty. Kind of like when you play a game that allows you to change the difficulty, like Call of Duty, or even the popular game Minecraft, and you can choose the option of normal, easy, or hard. With that being said, this would be, for example, hard mode for Naruto, as it was training his body in a way that had never been done before. Though he did not know this, he only felt the pain and suffering caused by the moment they mocked his parents, his family, and his friends, even his very own home village and home. 
Naruto would then fall on his knees. As two tears would fall from his eyes, he would then speak. I'm tired, Naruto would say, as he would fall face first into the ground. Naruto would then wake up. As he did not wake up, in the middle of a street where bandits surrounded him, and one rice ball was in front of him, and a piece of steak, rather, he was in a warm place, with a lit fire, in a home to be more exact. Naruto looked around as he saw Roshi. He would then ask what Roshi had been doing, as Roshi would say he was out of town, gathering materials for food. And he would also say that he had set up the whole thing with the bandits. Naruto's eyes would, well, open wide as he would tell Roshi that he doesn't care. He wants to quit being a ninja. He doesn't even want to do it anymore, Naruto would say. Roshi would be stunned. They broke his will this much, Roshi thought to himself. As Naruto would continue, bandits, huh? You know, on my first mission, I dealt with a lot of bandits. Or at least my first mission out of the village. But these ones were strong. There was one in particular. I think his name was Master. His name's Senin. He's a Kage level ninja. I knew of the bandits' location because they also fled from the stone. Our village was powerful back in the day, but many of the ninja on our village did not believe in Onaki because of their massive loss at the hands of the Leaf Village from your father, Minato Namakaze, the former fourth Okage. This is where Naruto would learn of his father's heritage and even some of his most famous feats, like clashing with the Raikage, hurting, a, well, a young eight tails, and even stopping a war. Naruto was, was surprised at how powerful his dad was, as he would ask, or I guess you could say it would come to the realization that they had thrown such insults because their families had been lost to Naruto's father, and even, I guess you could say by proxy, Naruto's mother. And even Naruto himself, I guess, as everything is related. And, in a way, people want revenge. So he understood why they, well, cursed at him so heavily. But, at that same time, he didn't care. Why would he? He had just been, well, broken. His will was destroyed entirely. With that being said, Naruto would stand up. As he would then fall back to the ground. He would then fall asleep. As around him was darkness, nothingness even. All that stood there was a boy. A boy with dark black hair, coated in golden armor. I'm the manifestation of your Susanoo. You know, Kabuto's my name. My apologies for any background noise again. Um, I don't know what that was, but something must have fell. With that being said, I shall continue. Kabuto would then present himself as powerful beyond Naruto as he would immediately rush towards Naruto, stopping right before him, or before him, I should say, but the shockwave of the stop would cause Naruto to be sent flying. This would then send Naruto even further into the darkness, as Kabuto was the only light. As his golden armor shined brightly, brighter than everything and anything Naruto had ever seen in his lifetime. Kabuto would then laugh. <laughs> the great Naruto Uzumaki, the man who even has control over me, his Susanoo. Luck, or I should say Kabuto, would then appear beside and behind Naruto at the same time. He was that fast. You know, my real name isn't Kabuto, but you just gave me that name because of what my Susanoo is. That's the Susanoo's name. Even though I am a manifestation of it, I'd like to be called Luck. Luck would then appear behind Naruto yet again, kicking him up into the air as he would fly further into the darkness. But there again, Luck slash Kabuto, I refer to both of their names, I guess you could say, 
um, so if I say Kabuto, it's still Luck, but if I say Luck, it's still Kabuto, if that makes sense, I hope it does, um, but with that being said, yet again, Luck was the light. Luck would then fly high, with Naruto also going up into the sky, you could say, the sky of darkness, but he wasn't necessarily going upwards, rather his body was flying upwards, if that makes sense, because he was hit upwards, so he's not, like, directly going upwards, rather his body's kind of, like, being sent upwards. With that being said, Luck was right beside him, flying through the skies of darkness within Naruto's interesting mind. With that being said, Luck would look at Naruto. You're disgusting, Luck would say, as he would do a backflip mid-air. He would then kick Naruto to the floor, as Naruto would fall onto the floor. I'm disgusting. What do you mean? Now go away. Uh, did you not hear me? I told you to never show yourself to me again. That's not actually what you said. Is that what you want, though? Do you want me to never show you myself again? Because that's not what your mind wants. Because from what I can see, I am the only light in this dark. Luck would then grab tightly onto his spear as he would rush towards Naruto, impaling him. This would not actually damage Naruto, but in this swell mind of Naruto's, he definitely felt the pain. He was emotionally hurting Naruto. Everything Luck slash Kabuto did to Naruto right now was hurting him on an emotional level, not on a physical, not in the slightest. Naruto, Asusano are heavily bonded to the Namikaze clan. Your father, Minato, well, he served along with my father, and his father served along with my grandfather, and his my great-grandfather. Not once did they lose their wills, not once did they lose their ways. And they were in much worse situations than you. Trust me when I say that. My father told me it all. You see, us Susanos don't have the greatest childhoods, but we do get to see our fathers. For one year. That year was the best year of my life. It was the same year before I, well, I guess you could say got put into you. Or you could even say I was reincarnated into you. But it wouldn't make too much sense if I said that. Rather, I'll say I was, uh, born into you. As, well, yeah. I see. Though I must say, I am kind of saddened that it wasn't a full year. It was only nine months. You see, in the months between, well, the time that you were conceived, you could say, or being born, while your mother was pregnant, I was able to talk to my father. I wish she was pregnant only four months more. Then I could say it was a full year. But my point is, Naruto, what you've gone through is nothing, but to see that you've lost your way is sickening. Luck would then walk towards Naruto, as Naruto, in his imagination, would be bloodied. Everything was now more clear. There was now trees around him. He was in a forest on the grassy, mossy floor. And Luck stood above him, with the sun shining brightly onto Luck's armor, which, well, was able to reflect it as it had been made of gold and things of the sort. Luck would then look down at Naruto with a stare, so gloomy Naruto could barely, well, do anything. He could barely think straight. Kabuto. Why? Why are you doing this? Can't you see, Master? You lost your way. And quite frankly, I... I don't know what to do. You see, ever since you told me to leave and, well, never come out, I haven't known what to do. And I've just watched you struggle, unable to do anything. I almost lost my way as well. Do you not know the suffering I felt? The tail beast within you, too. Me and him were struggling. We couldn't protect you, even though we were being beaten just as badly as you were. Naruto would then have a flashback in his head, back 
too, which is interesting because he's already in his head, you could say. But, yeah. With that being said, he would remember when the bandits kicked him into the building. When previous actions that I hadn't actually said, but this did occur. When the bandits used multiple jutsu on him in a day. When the bandits hit him, beat him, threw boiling hot water at him, spat on him. All the insults they threw at him also affected, well, both the QB and Luck. Not only that, but all the pain he felt affected them both as well. And all the emotional struggle he felt affected them both as well. So when Naruto's will broke, so did theirs. Luck would then look at Naruto, falling on his knees. Tears now streaming down his face as he would then have a confused look. You see, Naruto, I, I didn't know what to do. No, me and the cute, we didn't know what to do. We, we couldn't do anything. The QB would then put his hand on Luck's shoulder, or at least the manifestation of Luck in Naruto's mind. It's okay. The QB would then wipe his eye as he had actually shed a tear for both Luck's sentiment and Naruto's pain. Like I said before, they shared their emotional pain. And not necessarily that they did in the canon, where, well... Naruto never had a Susano, but because this Susano is kind of put, I guess you could say a whole triangle effect. Not a love triangle, but something much different, but kind of similar. Um, he's actually been able to feel Naruto's emotions. But with that being said, Luck would then thank the QB, thanking him for enduring his pain as well. As Naruto would realize what was happening, Naruto would realize he can't just give up. If he gave up, he would affect both Kabuto slash Luck and the Ninetales, who was much more friendly than he ever imagined. Naruto would then look up at the Ninetales, and he would also look at Luck. He would then bow to them. Please, Luck, and uh, the QB, please forgive me, but I need your power. I'll never be able to defeat Roshi if I don't get it. And I will never leave here if I don't defeat him. I can't. My pride depends on it. Fine. We'll give you our power, the QB would say. Luck would then be angered with an angry look on his expression. He was just kidding around, but he was still had an angry look on his face. Don't make decisions for me, QB, Luck would say. As he would then start to smirk. Naruto, I'll gladly give you my power as well. Now you admit it, QB. You want to give him my power just as eager as I am for him to use mine, right? Fine, I do admit it. It is sickening watching him only play with your power. Though, your Susano is interesting. I have a distaste for Uchiha, though, so it does at times make me angry. But knowing who you are and what you're like, I think I don't mind the Susano. Even though it has caused me some pain in the past. If you don't know what I'm talking about, actually, um, well, Madara used the Susano and coated the Ninetales with it. But I think the QB in this situation is okay with it. As Naruto would decide to fight Rochi. He would, or Roshi, if I did not say that correctly. Naruto would then wake up as he would challenge Roshi. He would lay on his bed as he would say, Roshi, tomorrow at 6, 6 a.m., we fight. Roshi would smile, though Naruto had not seen it. Well then, if that's true, I gladly accept your challenge, Naruto. All right, with that being said, Naruto would then leave Roshi's home, as he would then gather supplies for the fight, like Shuriken and Kunai. At this point, Naruto's been here for a pretty long time, about a month at that, as he would actually know his way around and would have maps and things of the sort to traverse the land. With that being said, Naruto would then have a fight with Roshi as their fight would commence. And with that being said, this is where I've decided to leave off the part. Um, maybe these parts are a little small with only like 20 minutes or so 
But, um, yeah, I think it's alright. I think this is the perfect length for the videos on my channel right now. Um, I feel like going overboard is alright. Like, the first part of the series was 28 minutes. It's perfectly fine. Um, but yeah. Also, I hope you guys enjoyed the What If Naruto the Izanagi, the movie, which that video should be out by then. But maybe I'm just, uh, wrong in my calculations. As this has been recorded on, I think, the 27th of October or the 26th. It really just depends. Um, but yeah. With that being said, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Check out the affiliate links down below. Comment down below your thoughts and feelings about the videos, as well as suggestions. And Rami X. Oh.